evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us tonight at the Millennium Stage. Immediately following this evening's performance, we invite you to stay with us for a Q&A hosted by WPFW's Bobby Hill. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Upper Anacostia Lower Gold Coast Symphonic presenting Drums Along the Potomac, a global go-go fantasia. and keeping it real, real creative, and someone who believes that go-go culture should be expressed in multiple art forms that challenge and celebrate one another. It shouldn't matter that I used to play with Petworth, Band and Show, or that my first book of poems is called The Maverick Room, or that I am the only person to ever have a solo exhibition of go-go related photographs. I have done it all to be known as my own community self and to de-decorate intelligence because wherever I go, everywhere I go, there I go, there I go, I go. As one of Go-Go's talking shoes, its traveling drum major of progressive resistance. Washington's famous humidity is not a result of the city being built on a swamp. The sweltering tension comes from the hot chop barbecue between local and federal interest. They eat on a hill. We beat on a river. They did not brand go-go violent to stop us from hurting ourselves, but to limit us to hurting and killing only ourselves and to prevent us from organizing our guns and fists into proper forms of community self-offense and community self-defense. DC, by federal design and unconstitutionally so, exists to provide Washington with workers, cheap labor, the lowest lower class. That's how capital and so-called capital cities work. DC is a damaged colony, a colony that contains real ruthless punching, poverty, disease, miseducation, and every pocket has become a flurry of mismanaged counterpunching. It makes sense that the ideal foot fist, it makes sense, say it again, that the ideal foot fist must bravely march the wrong punch right out of town and punched the wrong march right out of town. A lot of percussion begins in confusion, and a lot of confusion ends in percussion.
everybody to the Kennedy Center, y'all. Washington, D.C., home of the politics, home of the Redskins, and home of Go Go Music, y'all. Hope you enjoy the experience today. We're going to try to mix it all up and give you just what you need. As we get to see warmed up, y'all. Special shot going out to my man, Wayne Lee. Jill Grilly's in the building, y'all. Sweet Shell, how you feeling, man? How you doing, B? Ah! Come on with it, Jeff. City. 
and go go all meeting up at the same place at the same time, y'all. It's my man Go Go Mickey, my man Quick, and myself, D Floyd. Yeah! Percussion. Look at y'all, when we was in New York City, Thursday night, I had to give them a little tutorial. Bring it down just a little bit quick. When we was in New York City Thursday night, Lincoln Center, I had to give them a little tutorial about go-go. Y'all already know what it is? All right, I'm gonna give you just a little bit more. When Chuck Brown decided to put it all together, one of the things that was important to him was call and response. I said, y'all said, right? That's how y'all do it? That's what y'all know? That's one of the elements, and we're gonna try it right here. Y'all ready? Let me say, hey! hey! Y'all say! Hey! That's it. Let me say, hey! Y'all say! Hey! Hey, hey!
Everybody needs one
So you know what? Everybody can sing this. You ready? I want to hear everybody sing this. Listen. Everybody needs one. You ready? Come on. Get ready. Get ready. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me hear you now. 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 Everybody needs one. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Let's see if you can. Let's see if you can sing this. Yeah. Let me see if you can do our little run here. Listen. Everybody, 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 everybody needs one. You ready? Everybody in the house, let's let everybody know in the world. Here we go now. Everybody, 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 everybody needs one.
Or if you are young and can bounce from one side of the river to the other with just your initials TCB, UCB, EU, BYB, RE, JYB, with or without water, a river is just a groove, a permanent home rule, water cranks. Ask the gentrifying developers, ask the Northeast Groovers, ask the Anacostia desperate banks, what a groove, what a public swimming pool feels like. A neck so sensitive it demands sandwich choke. Water cranks. Good itch scratching back and forth. Like a hardness only flow can heat. Stroke. Water cranks. These crank shaped notes that don't mean a swing if our city remains torn. They're torn square. The beltway tore it. Balance blamed us. Water cranks. now wants to take credit for the fixings. A drum kit is like a sit in and a sit in in the margins. Kenny Quick, sit in that kick. Water cranks. Grooving is getting along with folks, but cranking is cursing somebody out. All curse words are percussive and are percussion. Daughter and sons like to be hit from the back and the front. There are eight stops on the Metro Rail system that resemble the tops of Rototoms. The other 78 what stops be begging for the drum keys to twist and tune them. What up, Pops people? Pure crank will not deny you because you are broke. A drum kit what is like a sit-in in the sit-in in the margins, which is why they don't sell cowbells in grocery stores in Anacostia on a foot plate full of feet with a beater head wrapped what in a felt a mallet crank. like bacon around a scallop on a rod-shaped metal shaft. Grooving is getting along with folks, but cranking is cussing somebody out. What, a crank. what up, Pops people? What, a crank. what up, Pops people? What up, Pops people? Watercrank. 
dedication going out to Fred Joyner. Special dedication going out to Grill Greenlee. go too much further without acknowledging the one year passing of Chuck Brown, y'all. Uh, May 16th, the one year passing of our father, the creator of Gogo, -Go, Chuck Brown. And so when he first, a couple of things he was trying to put together when he uh, first decided to go after Gogo, -Go, he was a R&B uh, guitar player playing around the city. Some of the things he was worried about was the sounds coming out of Philadelphia. They had their own specific sound and the sounds coming out of Motown, Detroit, they had their own specific sound. So he wanted a specific sound for Washington, D.C. And outside of the call and response, there was a couple of other elements that he needed. One of the elements was, you know how when uh, R&B bands play and they stop once the song is over and everybody goes and sits down. So he, he didn't want everybody going to sit down, so he decided, like the DJs, when the DJs played, People would continue to dance, so he wanted people to continue to dance. So in between the songs, he wanted the beat to continue to ride. And there was this beat he had learned when he was a little boy in church. And he heard it again in the late 70s, and it was a Mr. Magic song. It was a song by Grover Washington called Mr. Magic. It had this beat like... Man, Jeff, y'all. And he said that song, it reminded him of when he was a young boy when his mom used to take him to church. And so he decided he was going to use these elements, call and response, songs never stopping, and this beat, Mr. Magic Beat, to be uh, the elements of Go Go. 30, 40 years later, we still here and we still playing it, y'all. And every song that you've heard so far had that beat being played by, to me, the number one percussionist DC has ever seen, my man, Gogo -Go Mickey, y'all. Five years, the last five years of Chuck Brown's life, this was his drummer, Kenny Quick Gross. I had the fortune to play with Chuck the last three years of his life, I'm D. Floyd. So what we want to do is build a, we want to build a beat from the bottom. And then we're going to add everything on top just to show you kind of what we're talking about. Oh, I want to introduce my man, Samir. We adopted him when we went to New York three, four days ago. Also, my man, Abdullah. Abdul, we adopted him three, four days ago when we went to New York, y'all. <laughs> so we're going to give it a try. No, that's why I want to be right there. Play the Mr. Magic so they know what I'm talking about, Mark. Just a little bit. Y'all feel that? But that's not what we plan. All right, all right. This is how we put it together, y'all. Each and every go-go band in DC, this is how they do it. This is how they put it together. One piece at a time. This is my man, Gogo -Go Mickey, right here, y'all. Here goes our adopted brother, Samir. Give him some room. Give him some room. Hey, Samir. Y'all feel that? Turn these drums back here. Woo. This is fire right here, y'all. Stay right there, 
wait a minute, Abdul. Stay right here just a little bit.
We bringing Courtney Bryan on the keys tonight, y'all. Show us some love. Hole, filling prisons with boys who understand gram fractions and triple beam mathematics before their 13th birthday. Boys who trust nothing but terror inside the body whose fathers learn manhood by imitating men who imitated the mad superfly. Were born in addict's womb and thrust into glorified violence through nursing bottlenecks of wild Irish roads, pulling swisher sweets. We're groomed in red light districts where bullets flew. Check one, check two.
Ashley's Roach Clip. the soul searchers they were just the soul searchers and this song was written by Lloyd Pinchback flute and saxophone player in 1972 for the original soul searchers album salt on the earth it is the most sampled song in go-go history and one of the most sampled songs in hip-hop history Ashley's Roach Clip for all y'all who know what a Roach Clip is raise your hands and nod your heads But the first week I played with Chuck Brown, we was at uh, Blues Alley. We was upstairs in the dressing room, but the rest of the band hadn't gotten there yet. So I thought I was going to impress Chuck Brown with my little bit of my little bit of Blues Alley history. So I told Chuck Brown, I remember the first night I was ever in Blues Alley, I came to hear Phyllis Hyman. And I sat in the first row, and she was whistling and singing all those beautiful Philadelphia songs. I was telling Chuck Brown how I first met Phyllis Hammond, how I first met her. <laughs> Chuck Brown looked at me and said, son, when I first met Phyllis Hammond, Jimmy Carter had me and her over to the White House. No matter how many stories you got, Chuck Brown always had the biggest stories in the building, y'all. We're gonna miss you, Chuck Brown. Explosive posters lit at night. I see you followed your orders and bought your recorders. On every tree, a cardboard savior nailed to rooted echoes of wooden agony. Sidewalks, graffiti with chalk silhouettes. Stank of murder, scabs of moonlight. Patch our wounded night. Cliff and boo, cliff came to boogie. Wrapped in bandage blue. Pale morning wakes the day. Hey, give me the bridge, yo. Give me the bridge, nan, nan. Mute doses of evaporating darkness on the breath of DC potholes. Wind me up, Chuck. What? Look at y'all. In honor of Chuck Brown, there's only one other thing that I didn't tell you about. <laughs> there's only one other thing I didn't tell you about, y'all. 
Let the drummer keep drumming now. My man, quick. Wind me up, Chuck. Wind me down, Brown. So my man, quick, he played with Chuck. Last five years, y'all. One last pocket, real quiet. Hey, Mick. Hey, Samir. Shh. One last pocket, real quick. Hold the music. I want to hear Samir. Samir, Mickey, and Quick. Samir by herself. Hold on, Mick. Y'all feel that? Y'all gotta hear Mickey by herself, y'all. Hey, Mick. My brother Abdul, you gotta hear him by himself, y'all. Man, Greg Tate, y'all. D. Floyd, Go Go Mickey, Abdul Madouk, Samir on tabla, Ben Tyree on guitar, Jared Nickerson on the bass, D. Jeff Smith on saxophone, 
Luke Bond on trombone, Jason on bass, Thomas Sayers Ellis on poetry and photography, Maz Swift on violin, Mark Carey on keyboards, Mia Pace on vocals, Misala Beatty on vocals, Courtney Bryan on keyboards, my man Quick on the drums. This has been the Upper Anacostia Lord Gold Coast Symphonic coming to you live from the Kennedy Center. Thank you. Good evening, every. Hey. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'd like to invite everybody to stick around, if you would. We're having a question and answer session coming up here in just a few minutes with uh, WPFW's Bobby Hill. So if you are getting up to leave, that's fine. If there's some empty seats, please come down and fill them if you'd like. And we'll be sharding in just a few minutes here. Thank you so much. Josh, can you hand me that wireless, please? Sorry. Thank you. So, Bobby, I have this mic. If you want to open it up to the public at all, I'm standing right here. I'll go out. Okay. okay. okay thank you. How about another big hand for the Upper Anacostia, Lower Gold Coast, Symphonic, Drums on the Potomac, a Global Go Go Fusion. How about another big hand, guys? Another big hand. And I'm Bobby, Bobby Hill with WPRW Radio. It's a pleasure to be here and get a chance to talk to these great guys. And we're also going to turn the mic over to you, so form your questions and just come down to the corner, gentleman with the hat on right here, and you can pose any questions you might have as well. First thing I want to uh, mention is in the side. When I was coming down here, I noticed all the orange bikes, all the orange ride share bikes. Anybody down here ride an a orange share, bike share to, to the Kennedy Center? Well, this is the most current uh, phenomenon of bike riding in Washington, D.C. 
but it was actually an earlier phenomenon uh, that really drew me to Go-Go. I grew up on 14th and Upshur, and any given day during the summer, you could see crews of bikers riding down the street in their 10 speed with their flags, and they'd be blowing their whistles, and that whistle, blowing the whistle, was a Chuck Brown song. Chuck was really influenced by that vibe, and that vibe influenced Chuck. So there's a long history with this music. Uh, one of the things that I heard um, uh, Thomas say at the beginning when he was setting up this piece was that he was trying to create a global, uh, let me get the exact words, trying to show the, present go-go culture in multiple, flat, in multiple platforms. Uh, anyone want to talk about some of the platforms you were trying to show through this presentation? Well, and this is Greg Tate. Well, I mean, I think um, first thing to be recognized is, is this is really three bands in one, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Mark and I, uh, as <laughs> DC veterans, residents, exiles, what have you, we've been talking for about three years about wanting to do some kind of project um, that honored the music in New York, kind of brought Go-Go to the fore and combined it with the things we were doing. And uh, we finally hit upon a concept and combinations of things we wanted to work with in terms of working with DC poets. Um, you didn't get to hear all the work. Um, there was Thomas's work, but there's also uh, Sterling Brown and Reginald Dwayne Betts and uh, Melanie Henderson and some other poets. Uh, you hear in other iterations of the concept. Um, and, um, and also, I mean, you know, we wanted to do this, what I call percussion discussion between what Gogo Mickey does and what Samir does and what Abdul does in terms of bringing together those three schools, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, of drum and polyrhythm, you yeah. know, tabla, talking drum, kunga, you know what I mean? Because they all, they speak, they speak a common language, and, but they had different dialects. So it was about finding that blend, you know. How long did it take for that blend to actually occur between, between those three? <laughs> 12 hours and two days. 12 hours and two <laughs> and not And not the full ensemble, I mean, particularly the drum aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, it all happened at once. Okay. I mean, that's okay. the way, you know, you just get used to, to kind of having to hit it like that in New mm -hmm. York. I mean, that's what, in a lot of ways, that's New York musicians claim to fame. It's like, you give them the music on Tuesday, they have it, they learn your whole set by the, the re first rehearsal on Thursday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but then, you know, it was about just coming together, finding that connection as people and as players, you know, through the compositions, you know, because it was some of everybody represented up here. Some of, you know, uh, music, um, you know, Quick and, 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 and D. Floyd and, and Mickey had developed with Rare Essence, mm -hmm. Mark's composition, some Burn Sugar things, Courtney's original composition, which was a commission. Uh, mm -hmm. for this project. Much history. I think, Thomas, you can. You know, and I also want to say that, um, piggybacking that, that um, the whole idea of the global symphonic, right, is that, you know, Gogo has been sort of crippled by outsiders and certain insiders pestering and pressuring it with the quote-unquote uh, notion of going national. But there's nothing more national than being born and raised in D.C. So in that way, Gogo is already global and national because everyone comes here. And I think that what this exchange, between, especially between the percussionists and the entire band, proves is that it already exists. It just hasn't had the other art forms come out and speak for it. You know, painting, theater, poetry, and all those kinds of things. And that's starting to happen. And I think that's one of the things that this is a testament to. It's happening in many places, not just in D.C., for Gogo, And I'm probably just a small example of that, that work. Well, th this is the only place where the drums along the Potomac really is truthfully happening, because we got the Potomac right here, uh, as, but as you guys a all river's know. river's a river. But I, I wanted to ask, um, we have the uh, tablas from India, uh, the talking drum from Senegal. Are there any um, plans to also take this music to those places as well? Um, oh, man, you know, we'll we have, have band, we'll travel. <laughs> <laughs> Where, who's sending us the plane tickets? We're there. Whoever can commission it can make it happen. All right. All right. Probably have a question down there. Hi. Um, I'm Dee Floyd's sister, Bianca. And uh, it's, it's really been a pleasure for me to hear you guys. Uh, because for us, I think you kind of bridged the generation gap. I'm a 60s, 70s generation person. And uh, I had 
memories of Sun Ra and Sly Stone and uh, Mother's Finest. And I remember taking Donna with us to hear Stevie Wonder when they used to do Human Kindness Day. And it got a little crazy. But uh, so, you know, I wanted to know if someone could speak to uh, that issue. I mean, Chuck Brown, I remember when it was Chuck Brown and Soul Searchers and the Matadors and those guys are playing in D.C. So can you talk a little bit about that? You say talk a little bit about it. Just talk about that generation. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's to me, for me personally, it, it was bridging two generations. Donnell's my younger brother, and he's playing go go. And I remember when he was growing up, like we used to kind of, uh, uh, you know, because we were Sly Stone and we were Sun Ra and we were Miles. So I think you've put that all together. And I just want to know if anybody's old enough, maybe, to speak to that, or maybe Donnell can well, speak to, to it. Well, to me, I think that. Um, <laughs> Gogo has so many different forms and shapes and colors. And it's really, that's what I was trying to say when we uh, built the song, that the foundation is always the drums and the kungas. And so Backyard would put rap on top of it. Chuck Brown would put a jazz classic on top of it. Rarsons would put an R&B song on top of it. But so no matter what you're talking about, it's still Gogo, the foundation, the call and response, the never stop in between songs. So that's why it's been able to last generation after generation because the foundation is always there. You can't, you can't build it from the roof. It has to start from the foundation. It's always been the percussion. Uh, one of the things you hear about hip hop, they refer to the phrase parks and backyards in, in terms of where it's performed, where it's played. That's a, that's a similar thing with Gogo as well. Isn't it? It's always been opportunities to perform live and outside to a whole bunch of people and get a similar energy that almost developed, that did develop uh, right up front. You want to talk about that? that I'd like energy? to say something about that. Uh, I grew up here in, in Washington, D.C., um, following Gogo. I, wherever I heard that beat, you could hear that beat, you know, from a distance, and I used to run to it. But um, I was inspired. You know, uh, speaking of D.C. as being uh, an international place, uh, my parents, you know, um, were very musical. I come from a very musical family, and I spent a lot of time right down here on the mall, and I would see everything from music from Peru, from music from Senegal, music from everywhere at the Folklife Festival. And then you'd hear Gogo, and it, it you know, it, it let me know that the roots of it came, you know, from the journey that we took here as Africans, and it also blended, you know, with, you know, the Native Americans that were here. So I can hear a lot of different things in this music, and I've always been attracted to uh, what happens when you go to a go-go, when you see 500 people in a synergy with the band, with the drum, you know, and, and one of the most important things for me when I listen to go-go is the drum, and that, is something that you don't really hear in other music, you know, outside of African music or music from Latin America or whatever. I celebrate Gogo as one of the most African musics that we have in America. And just like Cuba, you know, there's, there's over 100 bands at least in D.C. alone. And, you know, this is a gold mine for, you know, a new movement that's been here for 30 years. It's indigenous to Washington, D.C., but, you know, people have been snatching a little bit here and there. Like Donnell said, you know, you can hear, you might hear rap over top of it or R&B, but really it's the drum, and it's that thing that we have inside of us that it, that it really attracted me to the music and keeps me coming back. And that's what I want to share with the world, and that's why I'm really proud to have Donnell Floyd, Gogo Mickey, and Quick, and these gentlemen on stage, and as a part of this, you know, because when Greg and I first talked about it, you know, I was trying to imagine how I'm going to get these cats out of D.C. because <laughs> they work five, six nights a week, <laughs> you know, so here we are. And remember, you can ask your question down in the corner as well. Let me get a sense of uh, what we got out there. How many people, uh, this was their first Go-Go concert they've ever seen? And raise your hand, be honest. All right, all right. How many people you've seen too many go-go concerts to even count? <laughs> All right, we got a mixture. We got a good mixture. We got a good mixture. Uh, one of the things that you did, Greg, as the uh, convener of this event, 
is, I think, base the, um, the development, the flow of the music on the conduction process, conduction principle uh, that uh, Ancestor Bush Morris uh, developed. Uh, we, we, uh, Dee was talking about uh, Ancestor Chuck Brown, very worthy. Bush is another um, ancestor. Give you a chance just to speak about um, the conduction aspect and how you incorporate that. Yeah, well, conduction, um, as Bobby was saying, was invented by uh, a mentor of ours who recently passed away, uh, Mr. Lawrence Butch, Butch Morris. And he developed this system for conducting large ensemble improvisation. And he invented uh, about 25 different cues that allow you to completely rearrange, reorchestrate, redirect the music in real time with live musicians and musicians playing any kind of instrument. Musicians who don't even speak the same language. As long as they know what the cues mean, they're speaking the same language. You know, they're speaking a language of t in time and space and, and, um, and improvisational creativity. And so our band's been, the Burn Sugar's been together about 10 years, 12 years now. And uh, we had adopted Butch's system. We worked with Butch several times. And um, it's kind of like, it's our MO, it's, you know, it's our modus operandi, you know, so, and we've done a lot of different collaborations and projects over the last few years. Um, we work with Mr. Melvin Van Peebles, bringing a version of his sweet, sweet back to the stage as an opera in Paris. Uh, we did a tribute to, um, a theatrical tribute to James Brown at the Apollo. Um, we did a show of all Steely Dan music with Vernon Reed, and that conduction element is always there, you know, it's kind of like our through line, you know, it's, it's, it's the way in which we kind of open up the music to, to even more creativity than, than is inscribed in whatever the, the text of, of those people's musics are. You think it'd be worthwhile to uh, maybe talk about one or two guidances that you gave to them oh, okay. from a conduction standpoint? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can do it with the, with the audience. Real okay. Quick. So um, this is the most basic gesture. It, it means two things. It means we are about to begin, and it means sustain. And that means that when this falls, when that falls, you make one continuous sound. And every time it falls, you change that sound. So we'll just try that real quick. So just wait for the baton to fall and just make a sound. And, and sound is whatever you consider sound to be. You know, you could make it with your voice, you could make it slapping your palms, snap your fingers, stomp your feet. It's just whatever sound means to you. But just every time, you know, the baton <laughs> falls, the mic of baton falls, you change your sound. So let's try it. There you go. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, the thing is, that musicians will recognize that's amazing about this is that um, you know nobody was given a key, was given a note, yet there was a complete unity, you know, and that's one of that's part of the magic of the thing that Butch discovered, you know, because um, he worked with musicians from Turkey, from Japan, uh, from Senegal, from China, and sometimes he had to have a translator teach them the system. They didn't speak each other's language, but when you saw the concert, everybody knew what this meant. Everybody knew what with the other cues meant, and they created like a beautiful new musical language and experience. So that's, that's conduction. Thank you, Greg, thank you. And uh, Bush never made it to the Kennedy Center, but he almost did through that conduction that Greg did with, um, with you guys, and you did very, very well. Uh, any more questions from our audience? Because we are getting close to the close. What's up, fellas? So, hey, hey. so um, I got here for like the last 12 minutes, but I, you know, got to see a little bit of it. Um, when I initially came, because I knew you were doing the thing with Burnt Sugar, and I know they have this background of like experimental, avant-garde kind of sounds, I thought, well, maybe, maybe it'll be a merger of that. I didn't know, but it was cool regardless. You kind of hit the uh, sort of like Chuck Brown swing, like kind of like staple swing. So I, mine is sort of like a two-part question based on that. One, um, do you think that there is room within GoGo -Go for like avant-garde sounds, experimentation, or is GoGo -Go so rooted in a certain type of pocket that it, it, it has to be that no matter what? And then secondly, um, I've been, you know, I'm from DC, so I've been around like 
when we danced go-go like in the gym from the Chuck Brown days all the way up to like backyard days. And I've been seeing a lot of these new bands, these younger bands who are almost taking uh, go-go in sort of like a punk kind of direction. It's more aggressive, it's getting louder, it's even more minimal. So what do you guys think about that just in general, like experimentation, the future of go-go, what kind of shapes are you know possible? Thanks. So I think that um, go-go can be anything, again, as long as the uh, percussion is underneath. And Burnt Sugar just proved that. We, we were together two days in New York, and the next day we were in the Lincoln Center, and three days after that we were in the Kennedy Center. And, but long as, no matter what the song was, the, the go-go was underneath. There was five songs from Mark Curry's camp, which is indigenous people, five songs from Burnt Sugar's camp, and then three or four songs from, from us. <clears throat> about Bounce Beat, what you're referring to, I, I might be a little different about this because I, I kind of feel when there has been enough change in a genre, then it becomes something else. Like Chuck Brown was an R&B artist, but when he tinkered with it enough, it became go-go. In, in my opinion, and I'm, I don't know, you know, just my opinion, Bounce Beat has changed things enough to now, to me, that's Bounce Beat, not Go-Go. Let me jump on that too. Now you have to understand you're talking to people of a certain age up here, right? And that Go-Go exists or is only a certain amount of years old. And I'm a big fan like Daniel Floyd. I'm, think I know for a fact is of the golden age of go-go. And Donnell is one of those people who was high, came through in the golden age and has transitioned over into this age, into growing and sexy, et cetera, and thriving now. But if you think about the quote-unquote basic go-go pocket, which is the thing we're talking about, that comes from someplace else anyway, but now has added, been added more definition to it, it, that's still embryonic in a way. We say go-go's been around 30 years, 40 years, but that's no time when you talk about folk art and folk expression. The people who make go-go, the poor people who began in this city in the DC public schools, who had a certain kind of education, a certain kind of musical training, and their art goes as their lives go. So when you ask the question about can go-go, can that pocket change? I think of course it can change, but it will only go as the people's lives go and their social interactions go and as they bring more types of behavior and sound and noise. Because we're ultimately not talking about genre, we're talking about Black noise, and that's what D. Floyd's sister's question. Black noise stays open beyond genre. Like the, these things can connect because black noise, blues, jazz, the changing same, all that, leaves a window for the next thing, and then the next thing comes along. So when you say it sounds punk, that's because you're you're limited to the reference of punk. That sound is way before punk. That hi hat jumping up and down. That's you can hear that in some of the stuff that Motown got rid Holy of, Miss church. some of the church, the sanctified church, it comes back now as bounce because we live in the trendy package, make something, name it, come out of the age. But it's still something that was around forever. So here come the kids now. Now, I'm a golden age person, so I would say, yeah, it's taking its own branch, and I'm going to it, let it name itself. But the problem is that there's a riot going on in that. That shit sounds, you remember when the first time you heard Public Enemy? It's like cops was coming and somebody was chasing you and it was an alarm. That's that go-go. They upset. The road of Tom said, fuck the Congos, it's our turn. They losing it. And they ain't by lead talking no more. They jumping around, they ain't listening to their mamas and daddies. They pants down to their ankles. I, but they your kids. And I, so I'm just saying, it might give it a chance and it's up to you to do the next thing. But it's still black noise, no matter what we call it. And we got to resist those categories even though they're beautiful. Right? Right. Well, I think Mark was second me on this, but <laughs> we're trying to get his avant-garde as go-go, man. Because what made me want to do this project was going on YouTube and just, you know, because I left, I left DC 82. I kind of kept up with where the music was through my nephews until they graduated from college in the 90s, for real. You know, so I, I caught up on kind of the last 12, 13 years or you know, the last of the 90s, really, on YouTube. And um, I saw Mickey, I saw um, uh, my man Smoke from the Northeast Groovers, and I was listening to w the way they were improvising and the way they were using um, sonic effects, 
you know, and the language they had developed in terms of sound and in terms of rhythm was like, if you want to talk about avant-garde being ahead of, like, where everybody else is in music, nobody else on the planet is doing what these cats are doing with the kungas. They've turned the kungas into a new instrument, which is what I know from, uh, you know, from Mingus talking about that's what jazz musicians did, you know, with all the instruments of the orchestra. They created new instruments from the old. They've done this with percussion, you know, and so we're following them. But in terms of what we do, um, you know, if you'd heard the really, not just the complete concert tonight, but all the music we developed, you'd, you would have heard like all the flavors, you know what I mean? And still with that pulse and that groove and that connection, you know, uh, being established and made, that the call and response was all there, you know? So, um, you know, I mean, mu you know, music is <laughs> water, it's fluid, it's so fluid, it can go, you know, in, in any direction and into any tributary, you know what I mean? And they all draw from one another and the thing that I love about what we do, um, what we've been able to do with these guys is, is that, um, you know, you, you take the, the foundation of this language we speak. And uh, George Clinton said something once, he said basically, he said, uh, as long as you got the funk together, you can put whatever kind of meta foolishness on top of it you want to, <laughs> you know. So, you know, there's, there's no way in the world I, I, I would ever consider Go-Go limited because that would be, be saying African language of the drums is limited. We know it's unlimited. Rhythm is unlimited. You mentioned, I'm sorry, Jay. Well, I was going to say, it's also like thinking of um, jazz not as a music, but as a mindset. The fact that, you know, basically leaving yourself open to create. And that's what we did. We did. Like, I come from Ohio. I come from, like, the Dayton funk scene. Like, you know, um, Ohio Players, Slade, Faso, all of that. And the thing about Ohio funk is that it leaves a lot of space. There's a lot of holes in it. And that worked perfect with a band like this because there's so much happening that you really don't need someone to be really busy on bass. You need somebody really just to find the pocket, identify the pocket, and then let everybody else sort of like slide through. It was interesting what you said, Greg, about the flow. Thank you, Jay. Uh, you were talking about the flow of, of things. Um, how many people, there was a piece in the Washington Post about a week or two about the history of words. I don't know if you guys saw that. And there were um, 25 or so words that existed before the original languages were developed and they still exist today. And I didn't remember all of them, but flow, interestingly enough, was one of those words which trips me out. I, my, my concept of flow seems is, is current, hip, you know, now, but flow is, is a concept that's as ancient as we are humans on this planet. Uh, any other questions from the audience? DC about a year ago, been a big fan of Gogo. 15 years in Fort Greene, four years in New Orleans. Um, I guess look for, just look for the connection for um, brass bands and Gogo. Um, it's, I guess the, the question is, the, living in, now I live in the east of the river, living in Acostia and Ward 8, and trying to figure out how to use Gogo as a continuum of culture and um, a building building those bridges. You know, so there was an article in the Post about a month ago about there's a curriculum now in GoGo. Do you all who are here feel that there is a possibility of using GoGo? Because New Orleans turned the corner of brass band as far as in getting it in the educational system. Do you think GoGo got a chance for uh, DC and arts and education? Yeah, I was just a part of a program that uh, is um, putting go-go in the DC public school curriculum. So this whole summer we spent teaching the teachers how to teach the go-go. Uh, and that's gonna be a part of the DC curriculum. Um, and so all of those kind of things, and the problem with um, all of these things is this go-go has not reached the national acclaim level, you know, that hip hop, so for example, you hear hip hop in every music now, you hear every R&B singer starts with somebody rapping now, right? And the hip hop beat and underneath. Uh, and the same thing with, uh, you saw that same thing uh, as 
reggae was finding its way. And you find that same thing with the now the Dirty South song, sound is in everything. And so it's just a matter to me of, uh, you know, when your music finds its time. I got one thing to say on that. that there's one reason in, in, my, in my mind why Gogo has not moved past DC. And it, it has to do with a level of engagement and it also has to do with uh, the musicianship um, that it takes to do it. You know, when you talk about hip hop and, and a lot of these other musics, you know, they're not dealing with instruments. They're sampling instruments. So we grew up with instruments. Fortunately, thank you know, we had Mayor Barry. I had we had programs. <laughs> and yo, yeah. Hey, big ups to Mayor Barry, man. I'm gonna tell you right now, we had Let Him Play. That's where I met Ron Sutton Jr. He showed me my first chords on the piano. I mean, I met uh, Nap Turner, Mary Jefferson, uh, Maria Sanchez, all these beautiful people who were there to support musicians coming up. Well, so in but I think my point is this: um, you know, we we here in D.C. fortunately have been um, exposed to um, something that other people around this beautiful country have not. And that's the thing that keeps it from going beyond that. There's, for some reason, p people cannot lock into the rhythm. And I think it's a matter of, uh, which is a good thing in, in one way, that's what keeps it pure to me. That's what keeps it growing here. You know, um, once everybody gets a hold of it, then it's actually what it, it becomes defined. I don't think it's as defined as, as hip-hop is or, you know, things like that. So what I mean is that when the musicianship level comes up in these other areas and people do want to get into Gogo, -Go, they'll have to kind of either come here or be exposed to someone who knows the rhythm. So unless you can learn it in a program, I don't know how you're going to get it. So that's what I got to say about that. And let me add to that brother's question about curriculum, because I'm a writer. Um, when I, was, I grew up in D.C., D.C. public schools, Dunbar, Francis, all that. And I was bored out of my mind in all my literature courses, my typing class, everything. Because I, was be I belonged to the golden age of go and I couldn't wait to get out that night and get the band practice. And that pocket was in my head, the different version of that pocket. I became one of those people who photographed in my mind sonically what it looked like and what it sounded like. So I knew immediately, quickly, the difference between the bust and loose beat, rare senses one-on-one, EU's beat, or Tim, Robert Town solo for um, the bud, et cetera. So I started to cate categorize the different patterns and the different gears of the pocket. So that's why I can see the evolution to bounce. But if you think about those things, you, if you hear Go-Go and don't just listen to what they're saying or that you can't enter the song or you don't like what they're saying, but listen to what's beneath it, that conversation between the drummer, the conga player, the cowbell, Donnell and them, Chuck call it locking, but it's a discussion, like Greg said. It's a discussion. And if you listen to the various modes and gears of that, and you start to think about grammar, and that thing I hated in high school, conjugating sentences and conjugating verbs, drums, always the subject. Congas, always the verb. We can go through the whole band. And if we could take that thing, pull it apart, and give it to those individuals in the classroom as that, because everybody born in D.C. today can go outside right now and step into that or whatever that beat is. You ain't got to teach that. And it happens in Dickens, it happens in Hemingway, it happens in Ralph Ellison because it's language. It was the best of the world, it was the world. So it's the same thing. So it's your job though, as a teacher, to listen to them, to go in there and bring it out. Not their job, to, and that's one of the problems. But you new man from New Orleans, you got your work cut, you got your work cut out, baby. But I'm gonna say something about this man here, Thomas Sayers Ellis. I've known Thomas a long time, but when I first meeting we had to talk about this project, he gave me a hundred page manifesto of notes, just like what he just dropped, <laughs> called Crank Shape Notes. And I can't wait for him to publish it because I really feel that like, in academia you always need a text. He's given us the text. Shout out to Jill Greenlee who provided a Facebook page so I could do that. We got down and made it happen. They crazy, but we love you. All exceptional artists, these five, the other 13 that you saw before, Please give it up for Thomas Elzer. Elliot.
D. Floyd, Mark Harry, Greg Tate, Jerry Nicholson. Nicholson just went out. Jerry Nicholson. And we thank you all. We thank you all. And the Kennedy Center for making this happen.